So here I'd like to show you how I approach sound effects. I try not to use a single sound effect. I like to try and build it and really um, mix sound effects to create um, something that's more specific to the actual shot. So right now I'm looking at this shot where um, the girl gets blasted with blood and I'm breaking down the, shot, the sound effects to show you what I do. So you start off with a simple splat sound like this. Okay, it's pretty gross. It's pretty. It's a good splat. It's kind of cartoony, which is fine. Um, and then what I want to do, just so I get it is, it gives the feeling of a really big explosion. I need a deep, like powerful sound that just kind of emphasizes that. So I'll go in and just I added a cannon sound. <coughs> So now when you mix that cannon sound with the splat, it just adds a bit of, a bit more impact. Okay. And then on top of that, or under that I would say, I want to show all the little pieces of the blood and guts hitting the floor. So I just kind of got this sound effect that sounds like that. You can kind of hear that kind of trickling, kind of hitting the floor, splat sound. Okay, and then, let's see, what's this one? I don't even know what this one is. Oh, that's just sort of the sound of blood dripping on the floor. So, you got this, kind of wet sound. Now, when you mix them all together, this is what it sounds like. Makes it extra gruesome. Woohoo! Woo so right now I'm sitting here with composer Reston Williams. Um, yeah, we've known each other for a long time, uh, I, and he's graciously offered to help me with this project. So I'm just going to go over with him, sort of where where I want uh, the music to come in, and what type of music. And 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 it sounds like he already has a lot of ideas. This guy is awesome, so I'm really looking forward to this. So right now, uh, what, what we're doing is so obviously he doesn't have to go and do the full score or whatever and then find out it's not quite what it needs to be or whatever. We're going over looking at movie reference. So we're just going through actual clips from it, movies. And yeah, it, it enables me uh, as a composer to, to communicate to David what I'm hearing in my head because obviously I, I, you know, it's, it's easier to play something that sounds similar to what I'm hearing in my head than... Try to and go ba 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 ba. So and then there's this part that goes da da ba 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 ba. So, yeah. That's where you first like get a sense of a rhythm or. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was kind of hoping. Like when she takes off, it gets like heavier. But it's almost not quite all the way there yet. It's sort of like a, a temporary build until. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's really tense and really like it's tight, like it wants to stop, but it can't kind of. It's yeah. waiting for its cue to stop, kind of thing. No, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was what I was hearing. So here we go. I'm sitting down to begin writing the score. Uh, I'm about to, to put in the, the first note, which is going to be a, a gong hit. Right off the bat. That's the one right there. I'm gonna add some French horn. One of my favorite instruments. I'm working on the middle section, the running section where they're running towards the, uh, the cornucopia. Um, and I've already added some instruments, primarily the, uh, the main drumming that goes, the main percussion that happens throughout that. To that, I added some uh, French horns. Oh, these are important. These are the rising uh, violins. Those really add the, the sense of tension in the moment. And you put all that together and you basically get something that sounds like this. So there you have it. From 
idea to storyboarding, from animation to final sound. The Games of Hunger took me about three months off and on on the weeknights. It's a lot of work and it's hard to stay motivated. About halfway through, I didn't even find it funny anymore. It's really important to show it to people and get other people's eyes on it. You have to also trust yourself that if you found it funny when you wrote it and you started it, chances are other people, when they see it for the first time, they're going to laugh too. The hardest part of this process is starting it, especially when I come home from animating all day. But working on your own ideas is always refreshing and important to stay inspired. So plan to put some time aside every week to do your projects. What I do is I say Mondays and Tuesday nights are my art nights. So no matter what, whether I have an idea started or not, I know whatever I'm doing, I'm doing art that night. And that gives you a little kick in the butt to actually just start something. Do a little drawing, write a script, do anything. But as soon as you start, it'll be easier to continue. So finally it's done and then you panic and freak out as you hit the upload button on YouTube and it's out for the world to see. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more cartoons and be sure to subscribe to get all the latest news and to be notified when cartoons are released. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to speed on what I'm up to with my cartoons. Like us on Facebook so you can see works in progress and also so we can stay connected and hopefully I can answer other questions, maybe something that I didn't answer on in this video.